Good morning uh, and welcome to our daily devotional. It's Wednesday the 1st of April uh, and I was very tempted now to do an April Fool's joke this morning but I've resisted the temptation. Let's come to God in prayer. Let, let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, a new day, Lord, a new day filled with your grace, Lord. Uh, a day where we can come thankful for a night's sleep. Uh, we can come thankful, Lord, for waking, for our breakfast, Lord, for every uh, gift that you give us, Lord, even uh, in these challenging times or where we have uh, some of the things we like to do taken from us, Lord. So we thank you uh, for everything that you bless us with, Lord, all the practical things, the common grace uh, that you give us now, Lord, in this moment, in this day, Lord. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to read from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10 this morning. Uh, just reading from verse 19 through to verse 25. This is God's word. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. So we see here the, the writer of the Hebrews emphasising that now, through Christ, we have permission to enter the holy places. What did he mean by the holy places? Well, in, in chapter 9, the, the previous chapter in Hebrews, we see a couple of references to Jesus entering the holy places. And the context of this is the priests offering sacrifices outside the tabernacle. The holy places seems to refer to both the outer sanctuary of the tabernacle, the holy place, and the inner sanctuary known as the holy of holies. It was the holy of holies where God himself resided. So Jesus was able to enter into God's presence by means of his own blood. Not by means of the blood of goats or calves. And Jesus is therefore the mediator of a new covenant between God and man. And we learn later in chapter 9 that the holy place that Jesus has actually entered is heaven itself. To enter the holy places is to enter God's very presence. And we are told that we can enter the most holy place with confidence. We have a great priest over the house of God and we are called to draw near to God. Now at this time we collectively can't do that on a Sunday the way we would like to. And I don't know about you, but I certainly find that hard. It's good, yes, that we can do online services. And these, these are a real blessing. But at the same time, they're, they're no substitute, no real substitute for, for the real thing. And of course, we look forward to, to the day when we can meet again uh, under one roof as a church, whenever that may be. And not being able to meet for worship. We perhaps have been taught amongst other things, the blessing that it actually is to join together on a Sunday as God's people. But we still must come individually and as family units as best we can in a disciplined way to draw into the most holy place. In our devotional times, in our times of, of family devotions or, or, or worship, when we come to watch or, or listen to one of the online services, don't think of it as watching a service. Think of, it, think of it as coming to worship the Lord in your own home. And it could be all too easy, I think, to come to worship with a different attitude when we, are looking, when we are looking at a screen. We are called to enter the most holy place. We must surely come to our times of worship, even if at home, with great reverence, even if we are sitting in our own living rooms. We are called, verse 22, to draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. The importance of meeting together as a church is highlighted 
by verse 25, where we are told, let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. Now, we are not being disobedient Christians at present. Uh, we are in a situation where, of course, it's the right thing to do for us not to meet, to stop meeting together. But my point is that we are designed as God's people to meet face to face, to come together, to join together in, in, in fellowship. We are designed to be Christ's body together. And we will continue to feel the lack of this, uh, this fellowship in the weeks ahead. But it doesn't mean that we can't encourage one another. The remainder of verse 25 reads, but let us encourage one another. And going back to verse 24, it, it reads, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. In encouraging others, we receive encouragement in return. We are commanded to encourage one another. It's encouragement that helps us to remain steadfast in the faith and to grow in Christ. Can I challenge you to set yourself a goal for the next few weeks? Make a point of encouraging at least one person a day. It might be someone living in your household. It might not. It might be a friend you need to phone or text. It could be someone from church you don't even really know that well. They would still appreciate you contacting them to encourage them. I'm sure they would. Make a point of encouraging at least one person a day and not the same person every day, that would be too easy. Let's encourage one person a day. Let's continue to encourage one another. Let's take a moment to pray. Father, we thank you for the encouragement that we get from your word, the encouragement that you give us, the encouragement that we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can encourage one another, that we can spur one another on, Lord. And that perhaps Lord, is more difficult and challenging in these circumstances where we don't see each other face to face as we normally would. Lord. But still, help us to be motivated to make that effort, Lord, to, to contact one another, to encourage one another, that we, may, that we may remain steadfast in our faith and that we may continue to grow in our faith. May we know your encouragement, Lord. May we encourage one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I am down And oh my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart burden be Then I am still And wait here in the silence Until you come and sit a while with me You raise me up So I can stand on mountains You raise me up To walk on stormy seas I am strong When I am on your shore
Mm-hmm.